I have a drama queen situation going on today. So I'm in the middle of Lisa's live stream and we're having a really great discussion about how to write when you don't feel like writing and why you might not feel like writing and how you can work on your book in other ways that are not writing, which I will tell you more about what I think about that a little later. But um, all of this, all of this talk is and combined with like the talk I've been like thoughts I've been having lately in my vlogs about word counts and not counting words and that's kind of the place I'm in right now all of that has reminded me that it is September 8th it is well past September 1st and I never actually like tallied up and reported my Millwordy results because I started the Millwordy challenge September 1st 2020 and I documented it I kept a spreadsheet and can I just tell you guys I learned, I learned a lot from this. It was interesting to see how many words I wrote per day and I categorized them by like brainstorming words, um, outlining words, first draft words, and like rewrite or rewriting, rewrite or revising words. I made it all fiction. That was just for me personally. I only tracked fiction, words of fiction or Wow, I'm on fire today. I only tracked words in my fiction projects. I didn't track any like, you know, scripts for my YouTube channel, for example, or anything like that. I didn't include that. And I learned that I hate tracking. <laughs> I have never been a spreadsheet person, period. I don't know why. I just, I don't like being in a spreadsheet. And when I, I, I don't keep track of like the books I read either. I've never used Goodreads. Like I'm on there technically, but my account has been abandoned for years. I just don't like keeping track of things. When I do it, it takes the fun out of the thing for me for some reason. I don't like, and I I would have days where I would forget to report my word counts and then I'd have to go back and be like, all right, what did I write on? And it turns into a pain in the butt. That said, I'm still really glad I did this because I would have had no ballpark estimate if somebody had said, how many words do you think you write a year? And the results are in, and from September 1st of last year to the end of August, August 31st of 2021, I wrote 640,698 words, which obviously is not a million words, but you know, that's a lot of words. <laughs> and I, I feel pretty good about that. I mean, I don't think there's any, you know, I don't think writing more necessarily would have been better. I don't think writing less necessarily would have been better. I think that's just the year I had. I know a big part of that, especially last fall, was I was working on that video game project. And just because of the nature of what I was doing, I was getting massive word counts in every day. Like much more, if I'm being honest, than I, than I do normally working on my own books or working on like ghostwriting projects. So I know that played a big role, but then I also had months like November and December where I just checked out. I barely wrote. I was like sort of keeping up with my client projects. It was very bare minimum. So I don't know. It all evens out, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to track my words anymore. So today we've got like a minute left on this sprint and I have spent the morning. I've been working since about um, eight this morning on a client project uh, and I reached a good stopping point with that for today so for the rest of today I'm gonna be working on the shadow book my murder mystery I had a really wow I had a really good day with this book yesterday I wrote I hand wrote three scenes I felt like I was truly discovery writing in that in th all three scenes something happened at the end someone did something someone discovered something and it was like a surprise to me <laughs> which is nice and i don't know exactly what's going to happen next and that's super fun it's just still been really i don't know this has been such a fun way to work on this book so i'm going to jump back into this chat we're having and i will check back in with you guys soon Okay, the last sprint just started, but this dog is being such a diva that I don't think I can make it 20 minutes with her harassing me, so I'm just gonna take her out.
Okay, so the stream is over. We're back from our little outing and I'm about to have some lunch. I'm gonna take a break from vlogging for a little while because I don't know if you can hear this through the camera, but they are doing some sort of construction on the roof and there's like incessant hammering and it's driving me nuts and it's driving Rosa nuts. And it's just not <laughs> conducive to the vlogging environment. So I'm gonna eat and think about what I wanna do, like what my goal for today is with the shadow book and I will get back to you later. So during the live stream, we were talking about how to motivate yourself to write when you don't feel like writing. And I've actually vlogged about this in the past. And a lot of people in the comments had a lot of great suggestions, including my trick that I talked about before, which is I just set a super small goal. Like I say, I'm just going to write for 10 minutes or I'm just going to write 50 words, just something to get me started. And if that's all I do, that's all I do. But it's something, you know, um, the other thing that the thing I talked about on the live stream today um, is, you know, I I don't personally, I'm not one of those write every day people. I don't think you have to write every single day. In fact, I think for most people, that's probably not the best way to go about it because you just need to have those days where you're refilling, you know? If you can write every day, hats off to you, that's awesome. Uh, but you can when you're in the middle of a project and this is just for me, maybe this works for you, maybe not, but for me, it's best if I work on it every day. The work doesn't have to be writing though, because I find the longer I go, day one, day two, day three, of not working on the book at all, the harder it is for me to jump back into it because I feel like I have lost my momentum because I have lost my momentum. Uh, so what I mean by work but not write is, I mean anything, it could be doing some research it could be doing a little world building. It could be watching a documentary that's relevant to the top of the topic of your book. It could be reading books in your genre if that's something that you like doing while you're in the middle of writing a draft. Um, for me, last week specifically, I had like three really good writing days in a row. And then on the fourth day when I opened my notebook, I just didn't want to write. And I, I was feeling not really stuck is even too strong a word, but I was just like, eh. I wasn't really sure where to go next and I kind of realized it was because I was at the, the point where I really needed to start digging into and talking about my character's backstory more and even though with my protagonist I know what happened to her leading up to the start of the book there was a specific thing in regards to her professional life especially that I needed to do some more research on and so what I did that day um, instead of trying to force it is I did a little research and I ended up finding a podcast that is about this particular topic and I just binged like four episodes in a row while I was walking Rosa, while I was cooking, while I was doing chores, just listening to episodes and as I listened and learned I was thinking about my protagonist and like letting that part of her backstory develop in my mind and then the next day when I opened my notebook guess what I I mean, it was easy. The words just came out. I wrote more than I expected to about this particular thing, that work-related thing that happened to her and how it affected her and where how she ended up there and where she's where she is now as a result, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, just days like that. Um, sometimes you need to take a day where you don't write and you do something else. Uh, it's it's just it's like your brain telling you, okay, you need to stop for a minute. And there's some stuff you need to figure out before you can move on. So that was, I don't know, that was like a really fun discussion. And speaking of, this afternoon I got uh, two more scenes written. One from the protagonist's point of view and one from uh, one of the other m secondary POV characters' points of view. Uh, his backstory, this is the younger one. Um, he's like, I think he's about 27. He's, uh, his backstory is really kind of starting to come together faster than I thought. Two. In fact, almost all of the characters are. There's one character, uh, a woman. She's 
in her 50s. I know what she does for a living. I don't know a lot about her and she is like personality wise the way the other characters have described her so far is that she's kind of a closed book. She's really hard to read and that's true for me too. I don't I don't know much about her yet but the rest of them are really starting like to reveal themselves. I'm starting to get to know them and I'm just having so much fun with ending every single scene with a little twist or a little surprise. Surprising myself. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna resolve half of these things but I mean that's part of the fun and if they surprise me then I guess they're definitely gonna surprise the reader so I think that's probably a good thing. I do have a consultation today at five o'clock with a book coach client so I'm gonna stop working for right now just so I can have like an hour or two to run some errands and kind of clear my head of work because um, I don't want to go into a client call to talk about someone else's book after having my head buried in my own work for like seven hours because I won't be I won't be on top of my game you know <laughs> so I'm gonna stop there for today but I'm gonna check back in with you guys tomorrow and we'll see how things are going stage with this book where I am dreaming about it pretty much every night and when I say dreaming about it I mean like my mind locks onto one particular character or scene and I write it in my mind over and over again until I wake up <laughs> and last night I had um, I was writing just two really specific little moments, not even scenes, just moments with two different characters. One of them was like a reflection, a backstory moment, and the other one was um, a moment he has with another character at the very end of the book. Like what I see would be the very last few lines of his final scene. And I woke up, it was like three in the morning and I had these two things in my mind and I, I was like too tired to turn on a light and pull out my notebook and write them down um, or open my laptop. I, I was really out of it, but I didn't want to forget. And so what I did as I got up and got a drink of water is I just told myself two key phrases from these little snippets that I was writing and I was like just repeat these over and over again in your head and then you'll remember them in the morning and one of them was the word Superman and the other one was sarcastic trees and sure enough I repeated them over and over again as I <laughs> went back to sleep and just now as I sat down to write I was like oh I need to write down those two moments uh, just so I don't forget them Superman, I remembered, I knew the context, I knew what I meant by that, and I wrote out that little moment with that character at the very end. And then Sarcastic Trees, I kind of sat here for a moment, I wrote down Sarcastic Trees, and then I was like, what the heck <laughs> did I mean by that? And then I remembered which character it was, and then I remembered the bit of backstory, and I was like, okay, I think... I know what I was going for and I wrote it out, but either I didn't get it right or it was not nearly as revelatory <laughs> as it seemed like it was <laughs> in the middle of the night. But anyway, um, so after I did that, uh, I decided I'm kind of at the point now where flipping back and forth, like I have about 50 pages handwritten and flipping around, even though I'm like keeping track of scenes with my post-its, it's just getting a little bit annoying. Um, when I work in a document, I am constantly scrolling up to remind myself of little things and it wasn't working for me and I just needed, I, I, I like beat sheets guys, this is why I, I like 
to have that big board in front of me so I can just see the story at a glance. So I decided what I would do is I would get my note cards out and just write a summary of each scene, a really short summary of each scene that I have written so far and lay them out so that I could see them. And then on the back of each, so like the, the summary of the scene here, and then on the back, if there were any particular clues I did add or that I could, or that like foreshadowed something that would happen later, maybe anything, I could write it on the back so I don't forget. And I kind of color coded them. The cards that are green are from my protagonist's point of view. And the yellow card is from the villain's point of view. So I only have one of those so far. And then all of those kind of orange colored cards, those are all other characters' points of view, but not, but like, actually, let me count real quick. One, two, six, <laughs> six other characters' points of view. Okay, so I've been thinking a lot about um, how to make multi-POV work when it's so many POVs. You will hear a lot of advice, and I have probably given this advice, I'm sure I have, to a lot of people, that you want to be careful not to have too many POVs in your book. Um, and I think that's true. I, the, the biggest mistake writers make when they decide to give a certain character a point of view, like a side character, is that they're only doing it for convenience. They're doing it to... because that's the only way they think they can convey certain information to the reader um, is through this character, but this character doesn't have their own real arc in the book. And yeah, and you don't you don't want that. You want to avoid that. The other reason it doesn't work very often is because especially when a reader is starting out in a story, if they have a chapter from character A's point of view and then B's point of view and then C's point of view and then D's point of view, by the time we got back to A again, we have forgotten you know what was interesting about them. We're like, wait, what was their deal again? Uh. But sometimes I think it can work. And I'm, I'm going to attempt to defend my decision to have this many POVs in my book because I have read several novels that had like up to 10, even over 10 POVs. And to me as a reader, it worked very well and I didn't struggle to remember them. And I think, I think, at least I'm going to attempt to pull that off with this book. So let's talk about what makes it work. I read, um, one of the books I read recently, it's, it's been going around in a lot of like book club recommendations and things I think, is a book called Not a Happy Family. It's a very, very quick read and it does have many points of view, um, including, I can't remember exact, exactly how many, but definitely there's uh, three siblings and then two of them, their spouses get a point of view and then there's a detective point of view. I just remembered there was another character, it was like a nosy aunt who was mad that she wasn't part of, like she didn't inherit what she thought she would. There were a lot of characters. The reason I believe it worked very well, I never had a problem reading that book, uh, following, like remembering who, which character was which, is because it moved very linearly, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's, it was like, I was following the story of it was a murder mystery the murder of a couple and their three children stood to inherit a lot of money for them and the detective suspects one of the children murdered the parents and it went through this timeline over a period of i can't remember a couple weeks maybe um very organically hopping from one character to another character but telling the same thread of story. I feel like I'm doing a really bad job of explaining what I mean. The story starts with, I think it's Easter dinner, it's a holiday, and the family all gathers and they have this really horrible, awkward, tense uh, dinner because the, the father is just a jerk to all of his children, he's really terrible. And it, it goes, it follows this dinner and we get one, you know, the son's point of view, the daughter's point of view, the other daughter's point of view, so they're all in the same scene together. We just kind of go from one's head into the next. We get to the murder, we get to the detective's point of view. The story of what happens never stops. It just moves from character to character. It's very, very fast paced. Also, I think another reason it worked really well is that the scenes, the chapters were super, super, super short. So you were never 
in one character's head for more than a few pages and then you were to the next one so you didn't really have time to get lost in one character's tale and forget you know what you had just read again i feel like i'm doing a terrible job of explaining this let me contrast that with an example of when for me as a reader this doesn't work when i pick up a high fantasy like an epic fantasy that's multi pov there are many out there that do this well but some of them will start with this character in this kingdom in this particular circumstance and the chapter is extremely long it gives me a ton of really rich backstory on this particular part of this world and this particular character's role in this society and then we move to another chapter and this character is you know in a whole other part of the land so distant from this that we barely even know that this exists and it's a very different kind of society and maybe they have a different they're somewhere else in the you know societal structure maybe if this person was um among the lower class this person is you know royalty and we get their point of view and a whole lot more backstory on this part of the land and then we jump to another character and you see what i'm talking about like three four chapters in and i don't remember character a and it's hard for me to like find something to latch onto in this story because i need characters that i can care about and if i forget about them i can't care about them and i also it's too much information for me um to like try to make sense of and piece together again i think that work a lot of readers really love that maybe i don't know maybe i'm just not smart enough <laughs> for these kinds of books but i just i have too hard of a time keeping it all in my head when it's done poorly it can be done well i don't want to sound like i'm like crapping on epic fantasy like obviously a ton of writers do it really well and it's a genre i really enjoy but i do think that um the shorter scenes and making sure it is a linear story like a very specific plot line of you know this murder just happened and we're trying to solve it and all of the characters are completely involved in that all throughout that that's what makes it work for me as a reader and i'm hoping that's what's going to make it work for this book because i haven't even gotten into all of my pov <laughs> scenes yet I'm looking at them now and one of them is going to quite possibly die in the middle of the book so his POV will cease but um, there are other characters who I'm going to wait until later in the book to kind of hop into their heads but what I'm trying to look at is as I continue to do this I just want to make sure I don't go more than two scenes in a row without a green card, without without my protagonist's point of view, because she's kind of, she is the central character in the story. She is who I would call the protagonist. And while all of my other characters here do have their arcs, I know quite a bit about them, their backstories, and what they're going, how they're going to change by the end of the story, how it's going to affect them. But I do, I do just feel like it would feel a little too scattered if it was equally divided amongst all of my POVs. I sat down to record this and I thought, man, this is gonna be so helpful and insightful and now I feel like I made absolutely no effing sense. <laughs> so this might be, I don't know, a failed experiment. I'm gonna, you know, as always, I'm just gonna have to see how the first draft comes out once I actually start to write that. Um, maybe this just isn't gonna work, but right now the scenes um that i'm summarizing here they they are fairly short i i kind of suspect looking at them that if i were to start writing the first draft of this now most of them would be under 2000 words and that's that's a pretty short chapter so and you know again they're all these characters are contained in this house you know when we're in one character's point of view the other characters are still there so I'm hoping it's not going to be that hard to keep track of. But anyway, that's probably enough rambling about this topic. Um, when you, as a reader, what works for you and what doesn't with multi POV books? Can you think of any examples like I had where certain particularly fantasy books, it's too hard for me to track? How do you feel about that? Do you prefer that? Are you able to keep track of that? Is there something about certain multi POV novels that bother you? I don't know. I would just love to hear your thoughts, but I think <laughs> that is going to be it for this vlog so i would love to hear how your writing is going please update me in the comments below and i will see you guys next week with another vlog